Yesterday, Joe Biden came to Michigan to pose for photos at the picket line. But it's his policies that send Michigan auto workers to the unemployment line. He only came after I announced that I would be here. You know, he announced quite a bit later. Spoke for a few seconds. Did you notice he spoke for, what, a few seconds? And he had absolutely no idea what he was saying. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know what we were saying. Where am I, he's saying. Where am I? Oh, you're in Michigan. Oh, that's great. What are they doing in Michigan? They grow wheat in Michigan, he said. They, don't they grow wheat? No, that's, that's Iowa and other places. Biden's cruel and ridiculous electrical. Think of this. He wants electric vehicle mandates that will spell the death of the U.S. auto industry. You know, it doesn't matter. I watch it. You're negotiating a contract. You're all on picket lines and everything. But it doesn't make a damn bit of difference what you get, because in two years, you're all going to be out of business. You're not getting anything. What they're doing to the auto industry in Michigan and throughout the country is absolutely horrible and ridiculous. Hundreds of thousands of American jobs, your jobs, will be gone forever because crooked Joe Biden is selling out. But I don't think it's him. I don't think he actually knows what the hell he's doing. <laughs> you know the transition to electric vehicles is almost unavoidable, but it also has to work for everyone. There has to be a public-private partnership between the government and the manufacturers to ensure a smooth transition of the workforce. The reasons are threefold. First, there are fewer moving parts in electric vehicles, and hence, fewer workers will be required to assemble them. An internal combustion engine has about a thousand parts, whereas an electric motor only has about 50 parts. Ford's CEO has mentioned that 40% fewer workers are required to assemble an electric vehicle. Second, much investment into electric vehicles manufacturing took place in right-to-work states, which means that employees do not have to pay union fees. Those investments, also fueled by federal dollars, are going to manufacturers and not necessarily the labor force. And last, leading EV manufacturers such as Tesla or Hyundai have non-unionized, low-paid low labor forces, which also raises concerns. The shift away from gasoline cars to electric vehicles is quite fundamental. The infrastructure built to fuel gasoline cars slowly but surely will re be replaced by an infrastructure to charge electric vehicles. This infrastructure will also be more decentralized in the sense that people are going to be able to charge their cars at home and during the night. This will also change the consumption pattern for electricity, which has to be considered when we are transitioning to renewable energy such as wind and solar. EV production will also create new but different jobs compared to the current economy that is based on internal combustion engines. There are also going to be indirect effects, such as, for example, a decrease in fuel tax revenue or a decrease in ethanol consumption that may affect farmers. An important aspect is certainly long-term planning of the transition and to envision how the future will look like. Once this is accomplished, steps can be taken now to achieve a smooth transition. This will, will require supporting the workforce by investing in retraining and learning new skills. The transition may be comparable to the coal mining regions in Germany that underwent significant structural change away from mining in the last decades. The industries in those regions diversified and workers were trained mostly also by support of government investment. I think that it is also important that there is an acceptance in society about the EV industry. The transition to EVs is not a development that can be avoided, but that needs to work for everyone.